The sermon text is the same as the gospel from, taken from the 13th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 24th verse. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus our Christ. What we're going to do today is focus on evil and goodness. And we're going to try to understand what Jesus has to tell us about these two concepts. You see, sometimes we walk around and we think that there is no evil inside of us. We recognize the evil in other people. We see that they commit crimes or commit other less offenses or even worse offenses. And so it's very easy for us to come to the conclusion that the other person over there who is doing something evil, that's something about him. There's something about him. There's a character flaw in that person. On the other hand, others of us think that uh, when we do something wrong, it's not a character issue. Rather, it's an issue of how many times we can submit to the circumstances in our lives which are overpowering and we are so di it's so difficult for us to deal with those. Now, having said that, there is a story that I have told before. It's one of my favorite stories to illustrate the evil that really does exist in our society. It involves the direct, the, uh, the, not president, but he, it involves Stalin who was a dictator in Russia. And early on in his career, they were sitting around a table and they were talking about what they were going to do and what Stalin was going to do. And one of the uh, persons walked up, well, walked up or spoke up to Stalin and said, uh, how you expect to accomplish all of these things? You are punishing the peasants and they're never going to trust you. At that point, the door opened and somebody brought in a chicken. And Stalin took that chicken by its feet and started to pull the, 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 not only the wings but the feathers out one by one by one to the obvious anguish and pain of the chicken. And when it was finished and the chicken had no more hairs left, he put it on the floor and it started running away. And then Stalin reached into his pocket and got out a handful of seeds and he threw them in front of the chicken and the chicken immediately raced, and Stalin said, that's how I expect to win over the people in our nation. What evil must be there? And yet I want to suggest to us that evil is not just limited to such figures and dictators that we have in this nation and in wherever else. It's not just limited to, to people that are doing horrendous things. It's also within our hearts. You see, evil is not that some person over here is evil and some person over here is good. The evil and goodness create a path right through the middle of our hearts. So all of us are affected by evil and by good, and we have to recognize that. It's important for you and for me to understand that you and I perpetrate evil just as the worst persons. Now you might say to, your, to me, he said, Hans, that can't be. I'm a much better person than Stalin. But Jesus tells us that when we look deep into our hearts, we will recognize that in fact, we too are able to commit evil in ways that would surprise us depending upon the circumstances and the weakness of our character. So, Jesus tells this parable because he wants us to understand what the biblical perspective on evil is. You have here seed, good seed, which is being planted, and then you have weed that comes up and it destroys so much of the good or competes with the good and, and in a way is constantly uh, making its ugly face known. So here we are. What are we going to do about it? Well, the first thing that Jesus says is that we have to start with the assumption that the seed which has been sown is good. You see, sometimes you and I may read scripture, but we don't think that it really applies to us. We don't really think that the, uh, the seed that is being sown is all that good. We can even blame it. In fact, the disciples do, do the very thing. They, in fact, blame Jesus 
for not giving us good seed. He put another parable before them saying, the kingdom of God may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and and sowed weeds among the weed and went away. So when when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? You see, we have a tendency to question what God does with us. We have a tendency to question the seed that God has sown in our lives. We have a tendency to think that it doesn't really apply to us and it applies to other people. And so, Master, did you not sow good seed in the field? And how then does it have weeds? And he said to them, an enemy has done this. Remember Flip Wilson, a comedian? One of the things he was famous for as a comedian, he said, the devil made me do it. And you and I can join in. Have you ever said that? That's not me. I didn't do anything wrong. The devil made me do it. Or my wife made me do it. Or my father made me do it. And we can go on and on and find persons whom we can blame for the bad weeds. So, no, an enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, no, lest in gathering the weeds you, you, you root up the weed along with them, that both grow together until the harvest And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers. Let me take that apart a little bit. You see, Jesus is is saying and talking to the disciples and saying, you know, here we are, and I have sown good seeds. And they said, then how can we have bad seed? And Jesus explains that it was the evil one who did that, which also includes us. And when we include ourselves and really struggle with the notion that we could be the origin of evil in our lives, or that we could be the origin of evil in the lives of other people in our congregation, we have a difficult time. And we immediately want to go to the task. And that's what the disciples said. They immediately wanted to go and do what? They wanted to rip up the weeds in order to secure or procure the good seed that was sown. But Jesus says, no. He said, let's not do that. Because you don't really have the ability to distinguish between good and evil. You don't really have the ability to come here and identify what is good and what is bad. I need to be the judge. I'm the judge of what is good and what is bad. Not you, even though you might hastily want to rip up the weeds And when, in fact, you're going to destroy the good wheat when you try that, and not only destroy the good wheat, but the good wheat is entangled in the roots with with the darnel, which was the weed that Jesus was referring to here. So we come to the point in the end where Jesus is saying, gather the wheats first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Finally, Jesus uh, says, let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time, I will tell the reapers. Do you notice the focus here? He will tell the reapers. God is the judge. We are not the ones to judge what God is doing. We're not the ones to judge whether somebody is a weed or a wheat. We need to leave that up to Jesus And we need to leave that up to Jesus because he is the only one who can really look into our hearts and determine what our hearts are all about, whether there are good seeds and bad seeds. It's a decision, however, that each of us needs to make. Are we going to be the one in in control or will somebody else be the one in control? There's a very famous story that was used by Jerry Spence, an attorney in Wyoming. And Jerry Spence used this story in a closing argument, and uh, it's a wonderful story to make the point that God is the judge and not we. There was a wise man in this community. He was known by everyone as giving the best advice that anyone could even afford. No one really had to pay for him, but he was willing to give advice and good advice. 
And some of the people in the, in the community were upset that uh, he was giving out this advice and, and they always tried to trick him to see if they could actually uh, get him to misstate or, or make a mistake or have an accident. And, and so on one occasion, a young teenage boy decided, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to him and I'm going to ask him a question. And I'm going to have, I have a bird in my hand and I'm going to approach the wise man and I'm going to show him and tell him, look, I'm going to say, I have a bird in my hand. And the wise man will acknowledge that. And then I will say to the wise man, is the bird alive or is it dead? And if the wise man says it's alive, then I'm going to squeeze the bird until it has died. And I can make a fool out of the wise man. And if he says, no, the, the, uh, the bird is alive, squeeze dead. If I say, on the other hand, that the bird is dead, then I'm just going to open my hands and the bird will fly away. And again, I will have better and I will be wiser than the wise man. And so this young whippersnipper, so to speak, walked up to the wise man and he said, wise man, he said, I have in my hand a bird. He said, is it alive or is it dead? And for a moment, the wise man looked and said to him, it's in your hands. It's in your hands. And you see, that's what is true for all of us. The seed that is sown, that God is making available to us for our growth, is in our hands. God is willing to work with us and do all th sorts of things with us and for us. But we must always recognize that it is in God's hands that the reality plays itself out in our lives. Amen.